all this mud has me on high alert. We have a couple of goats showing some serious issues with parasites and we are gonna jump on top of it right away. Everybody's getting a double dose of herbs today and the two worst cases are actually gonna be getting chemical dewormer. All right, who do you like to put on the milk stand first, Ryan? Kitty. Kitty, okay, she gets a full heaping tablespoon. Kitty is actually going to be treated. Her eyelids are much paler than the others. Her eyelids are always paler than the others by nature, but they're even paler than that. So she's getting herbs and the dewormer, unfortunately. And then which stall is this one? The fancy girl, Shady. Okay. They had nice pink eyelids. So I'm gonna give three heaping tablespoons to them. And then this is for Dominic Daisy stall. Yep, Dominic and Daisy. And they had nice, pretty bright eyelids. Dominic um, was one of the ghosts that we treated recently and she, her eyelids were brighter pink than they were, but they're still a little on the pale side because she's recovering. So we're gonna make sure they have plenty of herbs. And then this is- Precious. Precious. Time. Heart stall. Hearts. I always give those guys extra because they're young. Stoling, and I just feel like they need that extra high herb level. And then this is the alpine stall. Yep. They are all on the pale side. I'm giving them a lot of herbs. They're getting double dose in their herbs. They're all a little pale, but not pale enough that I feel like they need to be treated. Um, time is getting treated in that stall. Um, she's extra pale, so. Um, I think that pretty much should catch us up to keep the parasites from being bad. I will probably not wait a whole week to redo the herbs. So I need to get on Amazon or Molly's Herbal and place an order because that was the last of it. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get quick delivery. I really don't have the money to do it, but it has to be done. So I'm gonna make it happen. All right. We had a couple of casualties in the teenage quail coop, so we are separating them up a little bit to make sure that they have enough space. And so the first step was to move the white ones into their own separate breeding colony. So we'll see how this works out. All right, I've got my jumbo meat makers separated out. I think I grabbed one male at least. So this will be a little breeding colony all on its own. I tried to aim for the biggest ones. All right, that freed up a lot of space in here already. We will be dividing these guys up shortly as well into more cage systems. We just haven't got a space cleared for them yet. The teenagers have been acclimated pretty well to having a more drafty experience rather than the closed inverter where they still stay really warm and they're fully feathered and full size so i feel like the two batches that we just took out and put in the other cage should do okay without a light i am a little bit nervous but we have some mild temperatures here in georgia right now so i think this is probably the perfect timing to do it we had some serious invasion in these beds this year with not just a creeping Charlie, but bigger stuff like the Solidago and the blackberries. So this bed here, there's another bed here that everything's fallen over on top of, but this bed here, it's actually growing up in the bed. So we need to get all of this pulled so that all of this can be maintained better. And then I'm gonna have Ryan to come in here with the weed eater blade not the string and get all of this cleared out leaving the elderberry and just clear out this section so that we can keep the weeds from coming back into these asparagus beds because i mean we're at risk of losing asparagus in this bed already i mean you can see the asparagus are here they're just um being overtaken <laughs> Don't 
don't mind my singing. <laughs> Khaleesi is healed enough that she was able to be put out last night and she seems so much happier. And Titus was so happy to be able to play with her again. He's so excited this morning. Act excited, Titus. <laughs> oh, these sweet pups. I love them. But Ryan noticed that Titus started shaking his head a lot and we checked the ears and we do have ear mites. So we're gonna go ahead and treat that. We've already wiped out his ears with olive oil. Uh, 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 uh. Get back. No, Khaleesi. So we've already wiped out his ears with olive oil. And that's the first step to treating the mites. The next step is my magic potion. So I make my own garlic mullion. I make my own garlic mullion eardrops for when our family has ear infections or ear aches. So this is actually a great treatment for ear mites as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead, put a dropper full, rub it in. That'll get down inside of the ear and get rid of any situations in the ear as well as it'll drizzle out all over the ear flap. Get back here, sweet boy. My kids always joke that I make them smell like garlic bread when they're sick. Now my dogs too. It's okay. And you just rub it in. Make sure it goes down inside the ear and gets all over the ear flap. I do have a product that's pretty natural. That's something you can purchase for the ear mites as well. It's on my Wholesome Roots Amazon wish list, And I think it's on my Amazon storefront, which is down in the description. If you haven't checked that out, I've got lots of products for animals and homesteading in that storefront. Whew, those dogs wore me out. Is that better? So the product in my Amazon storefront and wish list is called New Stock. And it's a cream that you can apply to the inside of the ear as well to help prevent or treat mites. Um, this is very simple to make. I plan on doing a video on it someday. I guess when I run out. But it's basically, I did a heat infused oil with fresh garlic and mullion. And I brought it up to a hot temperature to make sure that the garlic and the mullion were infused into the oil. And then I drained it through a very fine mesh strainer. It was, I think I used butter muslin because you don't want any particulates in your finished oil product because those particulates can cause it to go bad. Without the particulates, it should stay good forever. I do keep it in the fridge when not in use. When it's in use, I have to take it out of the fridge and leave it out because it'll solidify because it's made with olive oil. Olive oil has got healing properties as well, so it's a good one to use for most medical oil infusion reasons.
out you go. <sighs> Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that it was only two that needed treatment. Kind of glad about that. So, I guess the herbs have been doing a pretty good job of preventing any issues. So, we just need to keep on top of it, be a little bit more aggressive during this wet weather. And that's something I really knew and I don't know why I wasn't upping the dose because of the wet weather. I kept on saying, oh, I need to up the dose. And then I didn't. So I'm really feeling like I could have done better here. So, But I hope that it's a lesson for you guys. And you know that if you're getting a lot of serious mud and wet conditions, that if you're using herbal dewormers, you really need to increase the use of the herbal dewormers at that point. Right, Ryan? That's right. And... You know, don't be afraid if you have to resort to chemicals. It sucks. We don't like it. Nobody likes it. But sometimes it's just what you have to do. Sometimes you need the heavier option, and that's what modern medicine... Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, I can't remember the last time any of us have had to use antibiotics. But if we needed to, I definitely would. We just haven't needed to. Our herbal medicines have helped us as a family to be healthy and strong and fight against any infections but if we had an infection we would treat it and that's what we're doing for the goats um, there is a milk withdrawal on this medicine but no worries there because we won't be drinking it autumn will <laughs> and autumn is doing really good ryan was just saying he's coming up with some plans for her little wheelchair and uh yeah. we, sh we should be making a parts list soon for that and going and get that huh I think maybe it. that'll be her Christmas present <laughs> Maybe. so despite some obstacles along the way things are gonna be okay and we are headed out today to go make Christmas candy with our dear friends and that's gonna be a complete and total blast and help get our minds off of the day-to-day -day homestead tasks that turn into a little bit more difficult than we like to it to be but it's not like that all the time. It's only like that some of the time. Most of the time, it's a pretty glorious life. Most of the time. <laughs> it's all cute and cuddly and squishy and fun. Yeah. Most of the time. And that makes up for the other times. Yep, I think so. So, don't despair. We will prevail. So as with any homeopathic remedy, Dosing as often as you can is the key. So with the ear mites, we're gonna do this at least once a day, but preferably twice a day, or even three times a day. You can't overdose on garlic mullion in your ear. <laughs> That's the beauty of using herbs to help treat stuff. So this is gonna be what we do we'll, when we take them out in the morning. We'll put it in when we take them in at night, we'll put it in. That'll be the easiest for us, don't you think? Probably. All right, you ready to go make some candy? I am. Yay. Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. Hey, sweet Autumn. How are you? I brought you lots of nummies. Some oak, some privet, and some rosemary. I wanted to see what you thought of rosemary. I know rosemary is very beneficial in oil form for goats and healing so thought I would offer that to you what do you think oh what are you gonna go after first mm, pushing the rosemary down mm, not sure huh <laughs>